Hi guys! Welcome back to our second seasonal series for the season. We are beginning our December holiday recipes and tonight's recipe is going to be Christmas cauliflower casserole. So come along with me and let's get started. So this recipe was originally a taste of home recipe, which was not ketogenic, and I have altered it to make it ketogenic. And it's very simple, it has very few ingredients, and you could actually make this ahead if you wanted to in preparation for your holiday meal so that you wouldn't have to cook it when you're cooking the rest of your food for your Christmas dinner. So it's very easy and it should be very tasty because I've added bacon. <laughs> bacon makes everything tasty. So let's go ahead and jump into it. To begin our Christmas cauliflower casserole, we need to do two things. Preheat our oven to 375 degrees. And we also need a nine by 13 inch casserole dish and I have greased mine with avocado oil spray. So anything this size, 9 by 13, will be perfect for this casserole. I have also warmed eight slices of bacon in a little bit of rendered bacon grease just to rewarm them. That's a half a cup if you're using crumbles. So you are going to need three pounds of cauliflower. You can use fresh or frozen, but it needs to be cooked. So I have three pounds of cauliflower here. In a separate small bowl, you're going to need two cups of sour cream. And the first thing that I'm going to season that with is three cubes of chicken bouillon. And I'm just going to work that into the sour cream. I'm also going to add some seasoning. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder. I'm going to add a little bit of sage. I'm going to add a little bit of salt-free seasoning. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and some black pepper. And then I'm also going to add one and a half teaspoons of ground mustard. And you just find this on the shelf with the rest of your seasoning. And it's a little bit stronger than mustard in a container. But it's going to give us a nice mustard taste to our sauce. I'm going to incorporate all of those into our sour cream. Okay, so that is going to form the base of our sauce. We are also going to need two cups of shredded cheese, and you can use any kind of cheese that you would like in this dish. I am using cheddar, and that's two cups. I'm going to take our sour cream sauce and put it in because we're going to stir everything together. Try to get everything I can out of the bowl. And I'm just going to work everything together, getting the sauce incorporated into our cauliflower. Just have a big spoon here. So the next step is I'm going to take the bacon that we warmed up and rendered in its own fat into our cauliflower. And I'm also going to incorporate that into our dish. Okay, 
So there it is, all combined, and I am now going to take this and empty it into our casserole dish. into our dish now. Now in the original taste of home recipe that I refer to in the introduction, the original recipe had um, ground up stuffing mix used as the breadcrumbs on the top of the dish. And of course that is not keto, so I have made some keto breadcrumbs and we're going to use those. Okay, so for our keto breadcrumbs, I have a half a cup of ground pork rinds and that is just pork rinds put in my mini food processor and pulverized. Then I have one quarter cup of Parmesan cheese and one quarter cup of almond flour. Now often when I make this recipe, I'm asked, can I use something besides almond flour? And yes, you can, you can use all pork rinds. I'm often asked, can I use something besides pork rinds? And yes, you can, you can substitute the pork rinds I have in here with additional almond flour and Parmesan cheese. So whatever you like or dislike, you can change this in equal ratios to the product that you do prefer, but I'm using a little bit of both for our family. So you have two cups of crumbs total in between the almond flour, the Parmesan cheese, and the pork rinds. Now in order to make this into a bread crumb mixture, you need to add some butter. So I have one quarter cup of melted butter. That is a half a stick of butter and I have melted it. So I'm just going to stir this together and that's going to give us a bread crumb and butter mixture. I have also seasoned this with just a little bit of the salt free seasoning. You could season it however you wish. It already has salt in it from the Parmesan cheese and the pork rinds, so you really don't need to salt it. So I'm just going to take this with my hands and start sprinkling it over our casserole. Just trying to be as even as we can. And these are gonna get nice and toasty. And if you want some additional brownness, at the end of our cooking process, you can always broil the top a little bit. So I'm just evenly putting these over the top of the casserole, trying to get a little bit of breadcrumb mixture over all of our casserole. Now this is going to go into the oven and you're going to bake it for about 30 minutes, keeping an eye on it. Since our ingredients are already cooked with the cauliflower, this is basically just a warming through and melding of our casserole together. Okay, into the oven, 375, and we are going to start at one half hour, so that's 30 minutes. Okay, our casserole is ready to be taken out of the oven. I let it go for about 23 minutes, and then I broiled it for about two to three minutes. So mine ended up taking 25 minutes. So it's 25 to 30 minutes, depending on your oven, and if you decide to broil the top. I'm going to let it rest for about 10 minutes, and then we will serve and CJ will give his opinion. Hi CJ. Hi. Welcome to our second seasonal series. This one is for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And our first dish actually has Christmas in the name. It is Christmas cauliflower casserole. Okay. It's good. It's still hot, um, but I didn't burn myself. Oh, that's good. 
but it's real good and I think of course just like a lot of casseroles it'll get better as the flavors have time to kind of meld together. Yeah it's probably one that could stand to be made the day before you plan on eating it. I yeah. think it'll get even better. I know we use sharp cheese, cheddar cheese, that gives it a nice little kick. Um, I know we put some bacon in there. Mm -hmm. um, Can you taste the mustard at all? No. No? Okay. I don't taste. Yeah, actually I do. Yeah. It probably will it but it's not, get stronger as yeah, it gets cooler. It's not super strong. Yeah. And I don't know if we've ever used mustard. We never. I've never uh, cooked with ground mustard. Before. Ground mustard, so I'm not... I, I think it's a different flavor than mustard Prepared. in a... Yeah. Yeah, in a container. So it's good. Um, I got some bacon on that bite, and I think it's really good. And it was pretty simple to make. Yeah, I think it could be played with. You could add some other things if you wanted, some onion or whatever. I sure. think it's definitely a flexible recipe. Yeah, actually some green onions probably would be good. Or some chives, or something. Some, yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's good just like it is. Uh, and it's super simple to make. Yes. I think people will like it. That's a bonus. Thanks, baby. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you are enjoying our seasonal series. And we hope that you will stick around for the rest of our Christmas series. Please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you do not miss out for the further recipes that I plan on making for this series. If you need any nutritional information, the full recipe for other recipes that we have made for the season and also recipes that we made for the holiday season last year, those can all be found on our blog and that is cjsketokitchen.com. We are also on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter, and that is CJ's Keto Kitchen. We hope that you'll come back next time and see us again. And until that time, we'll see you then. It's cold Bye. Outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe. And I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree. Tomorrow is